Iowa Catholic Radio presents the Daily Mass from St. Francis of Assisi Catholic Church in West Des Moines. Father Joseph Pins, pastor. Father John Broby, associate pastor. We offer this Mass for Kevin Kendrick. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. To prepare ourselves to celebrate this sacred mystery, let us call to mind our sons. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that as we celebrate in mystery the solemnity of your Son's resurrection, so too we may be worthy to rejoice at his coming with all the saints. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns within each of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. After Paul's escorts had taken him to Athens, they came away with instructions for Silas and Timothy to join him as soon as possible. Then Paul stood up at the Areopagus and said, You Athenians, I see that in every respect you are very religious. For as I walked around, looking carefully at your shrines, I even discovered an altar inscribed to an unknown God. What, therefore, you unknowingly worship, I proclaim to you, the God who made the world and all that is in it, the Lord of heaven and earth, does not dwell in sanctuaries made by human hands, nor is he served by human hands because he needs anything. Rather, it is he who gives everyone life, and breath, and everything. He made from one the whole human race to dwell on the entire surface of the earth, and he fixed the ordered seasons and the boundaries of their regions so that people might seek God, perhaps, even perhaps grope for him and find him, though indeed he is not far from any one of us, for in him we live and move and have our being. As even some of your poets have said, for we too are his offspring. Since therefore we are the offspring of God, we ought not to think that the divinity is like an image, fashioned from gold, silver, or stone by human art and imagination. God has overlooked the times of ignorance, but now he demands that all people everywhere repent, because he has established a day on which he will judge the world with justice through a man he has appointed, and he has provided confirmation for all by raising him from the dead. When they heard about resurrection of the dead, some began to scoff, but others said, We should like to hear you on this some other time. And so Paul left them, but some did join him and became believers. Among them were Dionysus, a member of the court of the Areopagus, a woman named Demaris, and others with them. After this, he left Athens and went to Corinth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights. Praise him, all you his angels. Praise him, all you, his hosts. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Let the kings of the earth and all peoples, the princes and all the judges of the earth, young men too, and maidens, old men and boys. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is exalted. His majesty is above earth and heaven. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. 
He has lifted up the horn of his people. Be this his praise from all his faithful ones, from the children of Israel, the people close to him. Alleluia. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Alleluia, alleluia. I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate. He will to be with you always. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, I have much more to tell you, but you cannot bear it now. But when he comes, the Spirit of truth, he will guide you to all truth. He will not speak on his own, but he will speak what he hears, and will declare to you the things that are coming. He will glorify me, because he will take from what is mine and declare it to you. Everything that the Father has is mine. For this reason I told you that he will take from what is mine and declare it to you. The Gospel of the Lord. Today we reflect on Acts chapter 17. St. Paul in Athens, in a place called Areopagus. In Athens, there are several idols, smaller gods. And there are so many in Athens, more than the whole of Greek, the Greece put together. And people will say that in Athens, you are more likely to meet a god than to meet men. That is how the place was littered with idols, with gods. Now, St. Paul finds himself in this place, which is also probably the headquarters of philosophy, intellectual discourse. And they were divided into two groups, the Epicureans and the Stoics. Now, Epicureans embraced pleasure. They think life is supposed to be fun. Enjoy yourself, and when you die, everything ends. And so for these people, life is headed towards extinction. You die and there is nothing more. Then there is the Stoics who believe that life is pain. And so you must embrace whatever comes your way as the will of God without any form of resentment. And life is a form of a cycle of events. And so we are all headed towards absorption by God himself. And so these were two philosophical groups in Areopagus that St. Paul was preaching about the resurrection of Christ. And the moment he spoke about the resurrection of Christ, he had three reactions. The first group of people mocked him. Are you a joker? What are you talking about? There is nothing like resurrection. And so they made mockery of the preaching of St. Paul. The second group of people, they are the people who postponed their repentance. They are the people who said, okay, we can put this on hold for now. And then we can take it up another time. And then there is the last group of people who believed and actually repented. And so, my dearly beloved, in our world today, there will always be these three groups of people. There are people who are mockers, who are making mockery of the good news, who are making mockery of Christianity, making mockery of Christ, making mockery of everything that we believe in. There are this group of people, my dearly beloved, whether we like it or not, wherever they find us, they will make mockery of us. Then the second group of people, the most dangerous, those who postpone. 
Those who procrastinate. My dearly beloved, we live in a world where you cannot be certain. One thing that you must never pos- postpone is the sacrament of reconciliation. We have an assurance of God's forgiveness anytime we repent. I take that again. We have an assurance of God's forgiveness anytime we repent. Ezekiel chapter 33 verse 11, As I live, says the Lord, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked man. Rather, let him turn away from his evil ways and live. In Isaiah chapter 1 verse 18, Though your sons be like scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Though they be red as crimson, they shall be white as wool. An assurance. First John chapter 1 verse 9, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from every wrongdoing. An assurance. So we have an assurance of God's forgiveness anytime we repent, anytime we confess. But we do not have God's assurance of tomorrow. We don't. Yes, we have an assurance of his forgiveness. But do you have an assurance of tomorrow? When you procrastinate your repentance, when you procrastinate your confession, When you procrastinate your sacrament of reconciliation, we don't have an assurance of tomorrow. Yes, you have an assurance of his forgiveness, of his mercy, of his compassion, but you don't have an assurance of tomorrow. When you procrastinate confession, sacrament of reconciliation, repentance to tomorrow. And that is why, my dearly beloved, to postpone repentance... To procrastinate repentance is the most dangerous situation that a Catholic, a Christian, can find him or herself. You never know what is happening in the next one hour. Anything can happen. The last group of people, those who believe, they listened, they believed, and then they embraced the good news. My dearly beloved in Christ, as we step out, like these two people, Let us embrace the good news and endeavor to be in the state of grace at all times. Shall we rise in prayer? For God's blessing upon the church, may he continue to light her way in sharing the gospel with the world. Let us pray to the Lord. For peace and security in the world, may God's love guide its leaders and inform their decisions. Let us pray to the Lord. For those who suffer at the hands of others, may the Lord grant them reprieve and bring them justice. Let us pray to the Lord. For our faith community gathered here, may the Holy Spirit continue to guide us to the truth. Let us pray to the Lord. For Kevin Kendrick and for all who have died, may the Lord grant them eternal rest and may perpetual light shine upon them. Let us pray to the Lord. For all those prayers that are in the depths of our hearts, Let us pray to the Lord. That we may stay in the state of grace at all times, let us ask our Mother Mary to intercede on our behalf as we pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And we make all our prayers through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth, work of human has to become for us the bread of life. 
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O God, who by the wonderful exchange effected in this sacrifice have made us partakers of the one supreme Godhead, grant, we pray, that as we have come to know your truth, we may make it ours by a worthy way of life through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time above all, to love yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed, through him the children of light rise to eternal life, and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful. For his death is our ransom from death, and in his rising the life of all has risen. Therefore, we come with Pascal joy, Every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the founder of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and given thanks, broke it, and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more given thanks, he gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For thus is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be guided into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of church, Israel Francis, our Pope, and William Johnson, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servant, Kevin Kendrick, whom you've called from this world to yourself. Grant that he was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life, and we praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in need of the Holy Spirit, 
All glory and is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you my peace, I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant a peace and eat in accordance with your will, who we'll live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Peace be with you. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Jesus who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy to stand on my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with the heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go announce the gospel of the Lord. Have a wonderful day. You've been listening to the Daily Mass from St. Francis of Assisi Catholic Church in West Des Moines on the Iowa Catholic Radio Network.